Well, hello again. It's time to continue our development of our Godot Engine platformer. And today what we're going to do is we're going to utilize a script to go through each level as we load them and to grab items such as the door, the coins, the key, maybe the chest at some point, and replace those with actual instances that perform some sort of actual function. We'll start with the player, of course. Um, so let me remove the player from our current level here. And let's go back to the base level. And to this level, I want to add a script. So we'll add not a base level script, but let's add a script called level.gdscript. Right. So what we want to do here is we want to, in this ready function, we want to uh, set up our tiles. So we want to basically, if we see, we want to go through the tile set that we have, or the tiles in our tile map, and see which, we're looking for certain tiles, and we want to delete them and replace them with actual entities or packed scenes or something like that, you know, basically like things that actually work and do things. Uh, and, you know, like placing the player as a tile that makes it easy to place the player, and then we can just go through and grab that and then, re and then replace that tile with the actual player entity. So let's make a function called uh, setup tiles because I like the name. It just sounds wonderful. Now, one of these things that the tiles, this function is going to do is we need to get the num we need to get the cells that are not empty. Well, the tile map provides a nice function for that, and uh, that is simply called get use cells. And that will return all cells, the a vector two, an array of vector twos that um, where a cell that doesn't have an ID, ID of equal to negative one is. So an, uh, if you see a negative one as a, as a cell index, that means that there's nothing there. So we just want to get all the used cells. So this will get that for us. And what we want to do is we want to loop through all of these. So we'll just do a for loop here. And so now we can grab, now we need to get the actual uh, cell, the tile index. Um, and to do that, that's another simple, pretty simple operation. The tile map provides a function for that and that's called get cell. And it takes an X and a Y location and we have that because we're doing cell, we'll just do cell.x and cell.y because remember that is the x and y location of where this first used cell is. And we're just looping through those. And then at some point we want to take the index of this and based off what it is, we want to do certain things. So for example, the index, if the index is the index of the tile that's the player tile, then we'll want to change that into an actual player. So I'm think I'm seeing that we'll need two different things here. We're going to need to know what the player index is for the tile. Um, and we can actually go and check that. We can go over here and go into the tile set. And here are all of the tiles that are in this tile set. And I think we assigned the player last. So there you go. So we can easily see that that index is index 13. So we can head back here and we can say, okay, well, player, if we see an index of 13, then that's going to be, that's going to be a player, or the player. And we'll replace, uh, we'll replace it with the player. And so to do that, we're also going to need to uh, know what to replace that player tile with. And of course, that's going to be the player scene. And we have to put that into the... Um, we have to we have to have that as a parameter into this level script. So we'll come in here and um, we should see that right here. So we'll just grab the player scene and drag that in there so that we'll have it. And then we'll head back on in here. Now, what we'll do is we'll grab the index and then we'll just do a match on that index. And that way we can do things like, okay, well, if it's the player, which is the only one we have right now, then we want to do something like create object. I'm just I'm just making up a function. Create uh, say create instance. 
from tile map. How about that? And we'll pass it in, um, let's say, the cell coordinates, um, the prefab, which in this case would be a player, and then maybe uh, where do we want to put the player? Like, where do we want to put the thing that we've created? So, uh, like the parent node. Uh, so the player, uh, we'll probably want to put it in the in the top level. So this script is here. So we'll just put the player on the same in the same uh, tree branch level as the tile the tile set. Say so we'll do it like that. So that's what that's what we're saying here. So now let's come down here. Doop, doop, doop. And we'll say function create instance from tile map, like so. And we'll say, uh, well, so we'll say coordinate, and that's a vector two. And we'll say, um, uh, we'll, we'll call it a prefab, which is really a packed scene. You don't have to type this, make these typed, but I like to make these typed because. It's it helps. It helps me. I'm I like static stuff. I like I like dynamic things, but since Godot has this feature, it's nice. It uh, it gives you some nice feedback if you've got some things wrong. Anyway, so let's do this parent, and we'll call this. This can be a node. Well, it, we'll just say it's a node two D because that's what it, that's just what it's going to be. And then all we need to do is we need to say first off we need to delete the the tile. Um, wherever that tile is. So that would be core.x and core.y. So we're going to set that cell. And then uh, an, empty, an empty cell is a negative one, like I said before. And then we'll do, we'll create our prefab object. And I'll, all we have to do to do that is just instance that prefab object like that. And then we will want to set the position of that prefab object equal to tiles and we want to get a world coordinate so we can do that we can say map to world and then we can just pass it in that coordinate just like that and then we'll lastly we'll need to add the parent the child to the parent so we'll add parent we'll add child the prefab pf Now, where, where we might get into trouble is, remember, we did set the, we set the player's pivot point at his feet. Otherwise, it's in the middle, if you recall. Last, well, it was a while back, wasn't it? Here is his pivot point. But our tile map is upper left hand corner. So really what we would want to, what we would need to do here if we wanted to do this to put him exactly where he needs to go would be to offset him by his size. This probably the what the sprite size is there a way to tell the sprite size? I'm not really sure. Um head back here. So we may also want sort of a, an offset as well. I'll show you what happens. Let's, let's run this and see what happens on that first. So our base level, or actually our level one, no longer has the player in it. It just has this guy. But you'll see when I run it, if we got it right, this guy should disappear and we should get an actual player. That is assuming that I did it correctly, which, uh, oh wait, did we, did we call that? We haven't even called it, have we? No, we haven't. So that's the thing. Since we are fiddling with the, uh, the root or our, um, our scene graph here, uh, we can't do, we can't call setup tiles directly from ready because this is as, this is called as soon as this particular, uh, object that this script is attached to gets added to the tree. We want the tree to be complete before we do this. We have to, otherwise it'll fuss. So we'll have to use uh, call deferred, and then we'll just pass in that setup tiles method. 
And that should get us what we want. We should get a replacement, and we do, you see right here. And let's check and make sure that he is indeed about in the right place. So he's right about there um, in between those two chains. And he sees a little bit different because of his offset. So it might behoove us to it might behoove us to pass in an offset. So maybe maybe uh, an offset like a a type vector two. And can we do? A, I think we can do that in. GD script. So we would do that and we would add that offset like that. And I think, is it going to fuss about that? It is going to fuss. Off, oh, I didn't say, I didn't spell it right. I didn't spell it right. Offset. Yeah. And I spelled it again. Three F's, two F's, not three. Okay. That seems to be okay. So we, if we don't declare it, it's going to be zero. But in our case, we know that our vector two here is going to be like a six. So that's half of the size, uh, half over, and we need to move him all the way. All the way down because his uh, the y component it is at his feet, and that I believe uh, matches where he is there. So that is exactly what we want. Cool. So there we have demonstrated that we can replace those. So now let's let's hmm let's add. I tell you what, let's stop there. And when we come back next, we'll think about the objects in the game and how we want them to interact with the player. And I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll, we'll of course, go through and search for the particular objects like the coin and the chest and the door and the key and all that. We'll replace them with actual entities. So we'll do more of the same as what we did with the player. So we'll have this but we'll have more types up here we'll get we'll get that going and we'll decide exactly how when the player touches those items like are they triggers are they pickups what are they what do they do so that is what we'll do in the next episode and we will see you later <laughs>